how you doing econ students? This is Jacob Clifford. Now I was in my office, I was making videos, and I was thinking to myself, it would be fun to do something new and different to have a race, a race between you and me to find out who is faster. So are you ready? Let's find out if you're faster than Mr. Clifford. Can you? Can your teacher? Let's find out. I made a bunch of slips of paper that have some key graphs right here. I'm gonna pick them randomly and I'll give you some time. I'll tell you what the graph is, give you some time uh, before we actually start the clock. Now before we jump into it, let's try something else that has nothing to do with economics at all. Let's try one of these, a uh, Rubik's Cube. See if you're faster than I am, okay? Now notice I'm not particularly fast, but that's kind of my point here. The goal here was to show you that this is perfect, right? It doesn't matter that I'm slow. The fact that it's perfect is more important. So same thing when you're preparing for tests and drawing these graphs in real life for your class. Be perfect. Make sure your graph is 100% perfect. That's more important than getting in a rush and then messing up your graph. So for this video, we're just having fun. But keep in mind, being perfect is more important than being fast. Okay, the rules here are just like doing a race with a Rubik's Cube. You gotta go ahead and put your hands down, put your pen down. I'm gonna give us the graph. I'm gonna choose one randomly, and then I'll give you the graph, and I'll say race, set, go. Draw it as fast as you can, and then put your hands back down. We'll stop the clock and see how you do. First one is actually the most important one. Aggregate demand supply showing a recessionary gap. So recessionary gap, given the price level and the quantity where we currently are, make sure to show me uh, the long run supply, the whole thing showing a recessionary gap. Here we go. Put your pencils down, pencil down, hands down. Here we go, your mark. Get set, go. All right, we've got GDP, real price level, aggregate demand, aggregate supply, we currently right here on the quantity and price of a long run added supply with the Y right there. How'd you do? Did you beat me? So we've got aggregate demand and supply. We've got uh, long run supply. Notice the long run supply has to be over to the right, right? It has to be the right. This is where we want to be. This is where the you know full employment would be at Y. And we are currently producing here, which is less than full uh, output. So this is the idea of a recessionary gap. There's the graph for recessionary gap. That was number one. How did you do? Did you beat my time? Did you beat my time? Okay, let's get the next one ready to go. Uh, randomly picking here, we've got the money market graph. Money market graph showing the supply and demand for money, showing expansionary monetary policy. So on that graph, you have to show the shift that occurs, showing expansionary monetary policy, any changes that happen on that graph. All right, here we go. Got a new piece of paper so we can make it nice and big on your mark showing expansionary monetary policy on the money market graph. Get set, go. Here we go, let's do it. We've got the quantity of money. I'm actually gonna write that one out. That's a nominal interest rate. This is the demand for money. There's the supply of money showing currently the interest rate right there. Supply of money shifts to the right. That's an increase in the money supply. Oh, I'm going to wait. Quantity of money here. I'll put money one and QM. M, done. How'd you do? Should do better than me? I went kind of slow. I messed up that M. I was going too slow right there. But uh, you can see there's a dot there. It's dotting over. Definitely was a dot. Okay, so let's go over the graph real quick so you know the demand for money is downward sloping. It shows the asset and transaction demand. And of course, the supply of money set by the central bank is vertical and it's set to the nominal interest rate. Now, maybe your teacher actually forces you to write nominal interest rate. That's probably good to do that. But understand it's a nominal interest rate, not the real interest rate. Here's the uh, current interest rate, and then the increase in the money supply because this was expansionary monetary policy. Shifted that supply curve to the right, leading to that graph. All right, how'd you do? Expansionary monetary policy. Did you beat me? On uh, let's do. Ah, we've got stagflation, right? The graph for stagflation. So uh, it says specifically aggregate demand and supply and show the shift. So don't just show that stagflation already happened. Show stagflation, uh, a shift that causes stagflation. I think you know what I'm talking about. So here we go, drop that pencil. I'm gonna draw it right next to here. All right, we're drawing stagflation. Here we go, on your mark. Get set, go. All right, stagflation, we've got GDP real. We've got the price level, aggregate demand, aggregate supply, currently some sort of equilibrium. Here's the price level, aggregate the supply, shifts to the left. Q1, the price level one, dot, 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 over. Done, I got it. How'd you do? We've got aggregate demand and supply. We've got uh, aggregate demand, aggregate supply. I didn't need to have a long run in this case, right? Hello, Jacob Clifford, ACDC Leadership. 
Doing well, how can I help you? Here's the original equilibrium showing aggregate supply shifting to the left. That's the idea of stagflation. We have more inflation or higher prices at the same time as a sluggish economy and lower GDP. So you can tell, definitely bad situation. Now, you might have drawn the longer aggregate supply here. That's fine if you did. It doesn't, you know, it's not wrong. All right, randomly picking. Here we go. Let's go for another one. On your mark, get set. All right, here we go. Foreign exchange graph showing an uh, increase in the demand for dollars. All right, so we're drawing dollars, the exchange rate for dollars, foreign exchange, uh, and then draw um, the idea of the demand going up for dollars. So given a scenario, uh, other people, other countries, uh, people in other countries prefer to vacation here in the United States so they need dollars. Draw that graph. All right, here we go. Let's get ready. Foreign exchange market. Trying to beat Mr. Clifford. Here we go. On your mark. Get set. Go. All right. Easy one because it's good old fashioned demand and supply setting the exchange rate. Exchange rate. Here's the quantity of dollars. There's the quantity of dollars of a Q1. Done. That's it. That's an ugly graph. Man, that's some ugly stuff. But that's right. We've got. No, that's not right. Oh, no, no, no. It's an increase in demand. We said there's an increase in demand. Q2, exchange rate, one and two. I'll put one here and two. Oh man, I totally screwed up. Uh, it's, I was just gonna draw the equilibrium. I didn't do the increase. That was the worst score I've ever had. Oh, it was bad. We've got uh, demand shifting to uh, the right. That's what it asked for. That's what I left out. So it didn't just want the equilibrium. It wanted the demand curve actually shifting. And I have here the exchange rate. Um, if this was like, you know, did they told you the other currency, you'd maybe label this differently. Uh, you know, if it was, you know, the number of, you know, euros to the dollar, you'd label it like this. But exchange rate's fine. I put ER1 and ER2. So clearly you can tell the currency, in this case, the dollar is appreciating, right? So that's the key grab. And man, you better beat me on that one because I performed horribly. Okay, I gotta redeem myself with this next one. Here we go. We only got a few left. Next one, Phil I got this one, the Phillips curve. Phillips curve showing just the long run. So some point, point A, showing the long run on the Phillips curve. So draw the Phillips curve, label it, and then draw point A. And I am going to beat you 100% on this one because I did so horrible on the last one. Here we go. You are going down. All right, oh, pens down, pencils down. Here we go. On your mark. We're doing the Phillips curve in the long run. Get set. Make sure to spell out what's on the axes, right? Ready and... Whoa. Go. All right, here we go. We've got unemployment, unemployment, and inflation. Spell it out. Don't give up. Spell it out. We've got the short run Phillips curve. We've got the long run Phillips curve. We've got point A. I'm going to dot that over and show us that's it. Done. Now, technically, this graph would work. Point A is good enough. If they gave you numbers on the test, it would be nice to add those in. For example, if the natural rate of unemployment was 5% and the, you know, the uh, inflation rate was something like 3%, you could actually label that just fine. So that would be correct. The fact that I didn't label those doesn't mean it wrong. You should also understand down here, point B is the idea of a recessionary gap. And if I did this C, that would be the idea of an inflationary gap, right? But it asked for full employment with point A. So there it is. That's the correct graph. Did you beat me? I hope you did, but I also hope that I won because seriously, that last one. Uh, all right, we got one more, here we go. Loanable funds at equilibrium. Can't go wrong with this one. Easy graph, loanable funds at equilibrium. Here we go, loanable funds versus Clifford. This is the last one. Can you beat me? Here we go. On your mark, get set, go. All right, loanable funds, got the quantity of loans. We've got the real interest rates. Downward sloping demand, upward sloping supply. We've got the quantity of loans over here is the real interest rate. Done. How'd you do? Did you beat me? Did you get it? There's a graph. Man, this is ugly though. Whew. But there it is showing the demand and the supply for loans. This is loanable funds. Loanable funds market shows how many loans are available and that's it. Just go old fashioned supply and demand. That's, that's easy. One more thing I want to mention when it comes to being perfect. Um, 
If you drew these graphs, if I was grading your AP test and these are the graphs you drew like this one, I'd be pretty upset. I'd be pretty disappointed if you draw it like this. Take your time, you got plenty of time on your test. Take your time to draw the graph correctly. Prove that you're actually getting this stuff. But for this video, we just had a little bit of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a blast. Thank you for watching. Until next time.